Hello, and welcome to Dyslexia Devoted, the podcast dedicated to building awareness, understanding, and strategies to help those with dyslexia. I'm your host, Lisa Parnello, dyslexia therapist and founder of Parnello Education Services. Join me as we dive into today's episode of Dyslexia Devoted. Happy 4th of July to all of my American listeners. And I know I have listeners from all around the world, which always amazes me when I see where you guys tune in from. I don't see who exactly is listening. I don't know anything personal about any of you, but it shows me what countries people download episodes from. And I always love seeing the different places you guys tune in from. Here in the States, it is 4th of July where we celebrate with lots of fireworks. And since it falls on a Tuesday this year, a lot of us have a four-day weekend, so I've been pretty lazy. I normally record this episode on Friday, and if you've ever met me, I'm actually the least lazy person ever. So the fact that I just decompressed and did nothing for several days, and my version of nothing doesn't actually mean nothing. I did, you know, yard work, and I took my car to be serviced, and I washed my car, and all sorts of things got done, but I didn't do any working whatsoever for multiple days in a row, which is pretty much a rarity for me. So we are getting this as a Tuesday episode instead of a Sunday night posting of this week's episode again. Clearly summer fever has hit me since this is two weeks in a row that I'm posting later than normal, but I figure you don't mind better late than never, right? Later tonight, I will be watching the fireworks from my front porch. No, I will not be setting any of them off because that's terrifying. There is a amusement park not that far from where I live, and they set off a big fireworks show every year. So ever since I was a little kid, I never had to go anywhere to watch fireworks. I can just watch it from my yard and we'll have my nieces and nephew come over and we will get to watch them all together as our annual family tradition. So I've got some time right now to record this podcast before people come over for barbecuing and watching fireworks. So this week we're diving into elementary aged books since last week we did books for the middle grades. Welcome to episode 57 of Dyslexia Devoted all about summer reading for the elementary grades. For this week's episode, I did a combination of ones that were already on my mind, but I also asked some of the kids who I see during summer session what are some of their favorite books that they like to do. So this week's episode is both from my own opinions and the opinions of kids, because that's who's going to be reading these books, right? We want kids to love the books they read, so I'm giving you some kid recommendations. One thing that is different for the elementary age books is that most of these, if not all of them, are part of a series. Because when we are talking about the younger kids, they often need shorter books, and therefore in order to give a longer continuation of a plot line in a story, they typically get made in a series. And then that way, when you have a series of books, if a kid usually likes the first one or two books, they'll generally like the full series. The books that I have listed for you today are part of a summer reading list. So if you signed up for that last week, it is the same list. And I added on a whole new chunk of books for the elementary grades. If you did not download that list last week, it's at parnelloeducation.com forward slash summer reading without any spaces or anything. I will also link it in the show description and on the show notes page so that you can download the full list of both elementary and middle grade books that I'm recommending on last week's episode as well as this week's episode. All right, so without further ado, let's jump into that reading list. The first one is Here's Hank. That is the younger age version of the Hank Zipser books that I mentioned last week. These ones were designed for more of a younger crowd, so if you were interested in the Hank Zipser books but you weren't quite sure they'd be age appropriate... The Here's Hank series is meant for younger kids, and they also have audio formats of the books as well. So if it's not something they can read on their own, they can listen to the stories too, because I love getting kids involved in audiobooks when they're at that younger age and teaching them to love books, even if they aren't great readers just yet. Another series that I absolutely love is Daisy Dreamer. Now, this book has more of a girly feel to it on the covers, But as the boys have been reading it, they actually tend to really enjoy the book. So if you can get the student or child to not judge a book by its cover, it is full of imagination and creativity. And the Daisy Dreamer series is a really great first chapter book series. They have a good use of imagination and vocabulary, but they also keep including some of those pictures that help add on to the story so the kids don't feel quite so overwhelmed when you take away all the pictures. This one has a nice balance of having good pictures, but they can't just use the pictures to guess the story. They really do have to read the words. And so I find this one to be a really good series for early chapter books. 
I really wish I found a more masculine style book of the same reading level, but I've yet to find a good one. So just know that the cover of the very first book is pink. So every once in a while, some of the boys will say like, oh, I don't want to read that. That's a girly book. So as much as I try really hard to teach kids, there is no such thing as boys and girls things. Everyone can love everything. But sometimes you have some of those tough boys who won't touch anything pink. Just to warn. All right. So next up is one that is a long loved series that I'm sure many of you have heard of, but in case you haven't, the Magic Tree House series has two kids traveling through time using a tree house and they follow the clues to find out who the tree house belongs to and they learn a little bit more about that person as they go along in each book. This series of stories tells about all sorts of things that happened in history that kids tend to love to learn about, such as dinosaurs, ninjas, knights. And each book has a different theme to it, depending on what time period they're traveling to. And kids always love to either read these books or listen to them. I've only had a couple of kids who don't like them. Most of the time, kids absolutely love it because it has a good mixture of fantasy and real things that happened in history. Another series I've told you guys about before, but in case you haven't heard that on some of my previous episodes, is Flyleaf Publishing. They have decodable books that are currently free for the digital version or you can buy them online and get the printed books if you don't believe in having too much technology time. And those ones, the kids can sound out every single word on the page and slowly move up in the levels as they get better at sounding out words. Another series is High Noon Books, and they have a couple different kinds of series, one of which is high interest and lower reading levels. So they talk about more mature topics and more interesting things meant for older kids, but the reading level is not as high so they aren't as overwhelmed by some of the text and they can still sound out the words. They also have a series of phonics and decodable books as well. So check out High Noon Books is another option. One of the ones that was voted for by the kids is the Diary of a Wimpy Kid series. The kids love the series. Parents don't always think it counts as reading, but it actually has a pretty good balance of pictures and higher vocabulary words. And the kids just love the stories because they're funny and sarcastic. And kids of all ages, anywhere from about second or third grade up through middle school, tend to love the Diary of a Wimpy Kid series. So that is another awesome choice that the kids absolutely love to read. And so when you just see Diary of a Wimpy Kid, it is very clearly targeted towards children buying the books, not parents. But the kids love it, and I've gone through the books. There's never anything overly inappropriate or anything like that. And the kids absolutely love the sarcastic jokes that go along the way. I will hear kids giggling even as they're reading it in their heads. It's adorable. Another very popular set of series are the Dave Pilkey books. And when I say Dave Pilkey, he is the author. That is not the name of the series. He has many, many series that are all graphic novels. And one thing really interesting about Dave Pilkey is he has ADHD and dyslexia, and he's a cartoonist. And so I find that to be really great for kids to see people who learn like them get to be absolutely successful people and can become writers that create books. To go from having dyslexia to writing books is pretty fantastic. And so those graphic novels can be a lot less intimidating for our struggling readers because they find them very enjoyable and they see all the pictures and they don't get quite so overwhelmed. And then another set of books that was recommended by students when I asked them last week was the What If You Had series. And yes, I know that's an incomplete sentence. Each book has a different theme to it. So it would be examples like, what if you had animal ears? What if you had animal teeth? What if you had animal feet? And each book teaches you about the different kinds of feet of different animals and what makes them different and why they have them or why they have specific kinds of ears for different kinds of animals and what it would look like. And it is filled with real pictures of actual animals, but it also has adorable little cartoon pictures of kids who have their body part exchanged for the animal one. For example, there's a kid with beaver teeth in the What If I Had Animal Teeth book. And so that you can see different examples of what those teeth would look like on a person because we clearly don't need, you know, body parts that look like that. And so it's got a funny mixture of goofy cartoon pictures and then real animal pictures and animal facts. And so I know a lot of times kids love learning about animals. And it is one way that you can usually get kids really excited about reading is if they get to learn about animals because I know very few children who hate all forms of animals. Pretty much all of them have some sort of creature that they love that they will find within these books. 
Okay, so that is it for my list of books that I am covering this week. There are tons more books, I'm sure. And I have created the summer reading list to be a Google Doc so that as I think of more, I can just keep adding to this list. So if you would like to go download the list of all of the books that I've talked about today, go to parnelloeducation.com forward slash summer reading, and you will be able to download the full list and anything I add on to it as I think of more along the way, because I teach kids all summer long and all year long, to be realistic. And so as I think of more books, I will just keep adding it to the list so that that way you can find something that interests the kids in your life. All right, that is it for today. And I'm off to go watch some fantastic fireworks. I'll see you next time. Thanks for tuning in to today's episode. If you want to learn even more about dyslexia, check out parnelloeducation.com forward slash courses. See you next time.